Hey guys, it's Zung, and today I'm gonna to be sharing three vegetarian pasta dishes that will help infuse all different types of vegetables into your diet. The first one we're gonna start with is a classic with a little bit of a twist. I'm making ratatouille pasta. That's right, that cute little movie is actually based off of a dish. Okay, so first we're gonna start by cooking off our eggplant. I'll drizzle some olive oil. All right, so once it gets hot, I'm gonna add in some eggplant. Eggplant is actually one of my favorite vegetables that I don't think about very often. I love eating it, but then I never remember to cook it. It's also super good for you. There's so many vitamins and nutrients in here. It helps with your brain function and digestion, and it also helps with heart health. So since eggplant acts as a sponge and really absorbs any flavor, I'm gonna season it with some salt and a pinch of Italian seasoning. I'm cooking the eggplant first actually because it tends to get kind of mushy when it plays with other vegetables. So I kind of want to mimic like a roasted eggplant here. So you can see it's starting to develop some of that char and flavor. I'm just gonna continue cooking it until it wilts down to about half the amount that we put in. Okay, this looks perfect. It's nice and roasty looking. Now I'm gonna take it out and we're gonna continue cooking it later. This way it holds its structure and it doesn't get mushy when you add it with all the other vegetables. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil back into the pot and then I'm gonna add my red bell peppers. Red bell peppers have an amazing amount of vitamin C, more than oranges actually. We'll just saute it for a quick minute now I'll add some zucchini, garlic, some red onions that I've already chopped up, and I'll just quickly stir fry it for about three minutes. I want the vegetables to maintain their crunch, so we don't want them mushy either, so just a few minutes worth, and then season it with some more salt. One thing I learned is that as you're cooking the vegetables and the pores like open up just like your skin, now is the best time to season it, and you kinda wanna season throughout the whole process. More Italian seasoning. It smells so good. Okay, I'm gonna add our eggplants back in. And then for our pasta, I've already cooked up two cups of dried penne pasta. I thought the shape of the penne pasta, any kind of short pasta would do well, but this just really works with this ratatouille. So I'll add it along with one cup of your favorite marinara sauce. This isn't too tomato sauce heavy, just because I want the vegetables to really shine and sometimes marinara can kind of overpower. And then to help make it kind of saucy, I always save a little bit of my pasta water, which already has the starch, so it really helps the sauce to cling. Pour that in, give it a quick stir. Beautiful, ah! Now, finally, to finish everything off, I'm gonna drizzle it with just like a little bit of olive oil because it really just rounds out the flavor. Hit it with some fresh Parmesan cheese and some fresh parsley. Final mix. And that is your ratatouille pasta that's chock full of vegetables. And it came together so fast. Like there's no reason you can't eat a lot of vegetables this year. Let's give this a try though. I love how the zucchini still has a little bit of the crunch in there. I didn't cook it all the way because that's how I like it. If you want it a little softer, go ahead and just chop it smaller and cook it all the way. But this eggplant has that nice roasty flavor from cooking it ahead of time. And it just tastes so good. I definitely taste the sauteed purple onions in there too. If you guys are a fan of mushrooms, here is another vegetable pasta that you'll love. It's a creamy garlic mushroom pasta. Okay, so first, I'm gonna start by heating up our pan. Medium high heat, as always, drizzled with some olive oil. All right, so once the oil is hot, I'm gonna start by sauteing our garlic. Our garlic will really infuse the oil and it'll help flavor the mushrooms. As always, if you guys want the recipe, I'll have it listed in the description box below. I'll saute the garlic until it's nice and fragrant for a minute. 
Then I'll add my mushrooms. I'm using Baby Bellas here, which are baby portobello mushrooms, and they're a great source of fiber, protein, and antioxidants. And since mushrooms are also one of those vegetables that really soak up any flavor you add because it acts like a sponge almost, I'm gonna season it with some Italian seasoning once again and a little bit of salt, just like our eggplant. Cook it up for a minute just until it kind of shrinks down. So once the mushrooms look like they're halfway cooked through, I'm gonna add our sauce. So for the sauce, instead of doing like a heavy cream Alfredo sauce, I've taught you guys this before, it's my little hack to make a lightened up cream sauce. I love using cream cheese and I'm using about two ounces here. Let it get nice and melty. Just kind of break it up if it's not moving along. And with making pasta, I always love to save the pasta water as I mentioned earlier. So just add a little bit of that in to get the sauce going. See, you already have a nice creamy sauce. All right, but we're not done yet. I'm gonna add in a little bit of milk. You can use any kind of plant-based milk here, oat milk, almond milk, regular milk if you don't want it fully vegetarian. And now just let everything come back to a quick simmer. And then as you see the sauce thickening up like this, we'll add our noodles. This noodle shape is also one of my favorites. I got these half rigatoni, they're called meze rigatoni, and they're just like these fun tube pastas that I thought would go really well with the mushrooms. And then to finish seasoning, just a little bit more Italian seasoning, Parmesan cheese, some parsley, basil, mix it up. I'll let it come to a simmer and then we're gonna amp it up with some more vegetables. Spinach, which is a great superfood. It's leafy green. It's a leafy green that's packed with nutrients. And since spinach always cooks down to like nothing, grab a nice handful. Look at the sauce. It's starting to thicken and coat our noodles. We're almost there. I like to stop when it's like really, really coated and not super running anymore. This looks so creamy and delicious, and I know that at the heart of this, it is a pasta dish, but I see just as many vegetables as I do pasta. Delicious. Let's give it a try. This rigatoni looks nice and creamy. You get my mushroom and some spinach in there. Mmm. I don't even feel like I need the meat because the mushrooms just has so much texture and meatiness to it. And then the garlic cream sauce in there is infused with so much flavor from the herbs. You guys, this is really one of my favorite like adult mac and cheese in a way. <laughs> it's so yummy. All right, so this next one is my twist on the pasta al limon, except I'm adding cauliflower and it hits all the right notes. So first, we're gonna toast up some garlicky breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna turn the heat on, add a drizzle of olive oil and maybe one teaspoon of butter. I'm gonna move the butter around, let it get nice and melty, spread it all over the pan. And then I'm gonna add one clove of minced garlic, saute it for like, a second until it gets nice and fragrant. And then I'll add a quarter cup of panko breadcrumbs. Now this step is kind of an extra step. It's definitely optional, but I just love the crunchiness that it adds to a rather plain pasta. Trust me, it'll take it to new heights. So I'm just gonna toast it up for maybe a minute, just until it gets nice and golden brown. Keep the breadcrumbs moving. Definitely make sure to keep the breadcrumbs moving so you don't risk burning it. Mm, I smell the garlic in there. It's gonna be so good. Now, if you guys are wondering what panko breadcrumbs are, they're just like a lighter Japanese breadcrumb that's like really airy and it almost tastes like like tempura bits. And you can definitely find panko breadcrumbs at any grocery stores nowadays. All right, so it's looking nice and golden brown. So this looks good to remove. 
So we're gonna use this as a garnish later and it'll add a nice crispity crunch to our pasta. So for this recipe, you can choose to roast your cauliflower in the oven ahead of time or you can do it directly in the pan. Since I'm more of like one pot type of gal, I'm gonna do it in this pan. So I'm gonna heat the pan up to medium high heat, let it get nice and hot, and then I'm gonna drizzle some olive oil. I'm gonna let the oil get nice and hot, but here I have a small head of cauliflower. We're using a whole head of cauliflower here, and I've already cut it into small pieces, just like one inch pieces like this, just so it cooks evenly. So once this gets hot, I'm gonna pour the whole thing into this pan. Now when you're making this and you're pan roasting it, it's really important to find like the biggest pan or pot that you have with a lot of surface area so that the cauliflower can brown beautifully. All right, our olive oil looks ready, so now I'm just gonna drop in the cauliflower. Season it with a little bit of salt, and then every so often, I'll just give it a quick stir. This process takes about 10 minutes, but if you want it to cook faster, you can pour in like two tablespoons of water, close the lid so it creates a steam, and then finish roasting it. But I'm just gonna let it go because I like it kind of more on the al dente side. So cauliflower has had its moment for the past few years now, but I feel like we're always using the same old type of recipe. So this one is a really fun way to integrate a whole head of cauliflower into an everyday weeknight meal. You can already see those beautiful charred roasted marks on the cauliflower, which means extra flavor. It's gonna be so good. This is looking beautiful. So now I'm gonna make some room for all the next ingredients. So I have a little well in the middle. Now I'm gonna add the rest of our garlic that I've already minced, some butter, mix it all together, nice and melty. I'm gonna add a zest of a whole lemon and the lemon juice. At this point, make sure your heat is on low or if it's like really hot, just go ahead and turn it off. We'll turn it back on in just a minute. So I'm adding lemon zest to really punch up that lemon flavor so it shines through once we make our sauce. Juice from half a lemon or you can use a whole lemon if you like your stuff pretty tangy. And then my trick for pasta sauce, instead of using heavy cream, I always like using cream cheese, just a little bit. Melt it. Now we can crank the heat back up to medium and then to make sure that it combines and makes a beautiful sauce, I'm gonna add half a cup of our pasta water. I've already cooked our pasta ahead of time and reserved a cup, but I'm only gonna use half a cup right now. The pasta water is nice and starchy, so it'll cling to the pasta when we add it. Now our pasta, I'm using Jamelli pasta here, which is like a corkscrew pasta. It was dried, I just cooked it up to pack the package's direction. Actually, I have to say this is my favorite shape of pasta. Just go ahead and pour it directly in. And now some Parmesan cheese, just sprinkle it right on top. And as the pasta and the pasta water heats up, just go ahead and give it a good mix. You can see the cream cheese water is clinging to the pasta, coating it with the Parmesan cheese. It's like a very light, creamy, lemony, refreshing sauce. If you think you want a little bit more sauce, you can go ahead and add the pasta water back in, like a little bit more, just a tiny little drizzle. This way it just loosens everything up. So always give it a quick taste just to see if maybe you do want to add a little bit more lemon juice. Mm. I definitely get the citrus notes from the lemon zest, but I think it could be a little tangier. Go ahead and squeeze it right in. And I know this looks super simple, but trust me, when we garnish it with the breadcrumbs, it's gonna be like your new favorite weeknight pasta, I promise. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and plate this. I'm gonna call this our lemony cauliflower pasta. <laughs> so now we add our breadcrumbs just right on top. It's almost as if you made like a baked pasta. I like sprinkling on a lot. 
And then to give it some color, we have some chopped parsley. You can definitely use some basil as well. Any types of, any type of Italian herb would go really well with this. And if you want a hint of spiciness, you can always add some red chili peppers. And that right there is a pretty delicious vegetarian meal. Let's give it a try. Let's get some pasta and then our cauliflower. I got our crunchy bits of panko on there, a little bit of everything. That's delicious. This is a perfect example of how you could take a classic, lighten it up, make it healthier for whatever you're trying to achieve for the new year. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment below and let me know if you tried it. And if you did try it, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Honeysuckle. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.